Hello, I'm ISBA President Paula Holderman. Today it is my pleasure to speak with Illinois Supreme Court Justice Mary Jane Tice. Justice Tice has served at every level of the judiciary in the state of Illinois. When Chief Justice Thomas R. Fitzgerald retired in 2010, the Supreme Court appointed her to fill his vacancy on the court. I asked her to discuss the process by which the Supreme Court hears cases. Well, the first point is that the court chooses its cases. Uh, like the United States Supreme Court, uh, the Illinois Supreme Court has the discretion of which cases to take. Uh, so each time the court comes together, which is about five times a year, uh, we'll vote. Uh, um, there may be as many as 500 petitions for leave to appeal that we'll vote on. All seven justices uh, vote on every single one of the cases. And what I've learned is most of the votes are about four to three on the cases that we take, which I think just shows what a close call it is to try to decide which are the correct cases to take. The practice of the Supreme Court, all of the justices um, staying together in a court, of course, when I first came into practice, they were all men, and so it was all men uh, staying together. Um, and obviously now we have three women on the Supreme Court. Uh, but it sounds like that practice of all being together uh, to, to think about your cases and to discuss them is actually still a very important aspect of how you decide cases. Would you say that's true? Oh, absolutely. And most states don't do this. This is really an unusual practice we have in Illinois. And it has a history. Uh, Chief Justice John Marshall of the United States Supreme Court really began this practice when the United States Supreme Court was a brand new institution. He made sure that the justices who traveled from all over the, the new country would come together in Washington, D.C., live together, and develop relationships so they could forge this new kind of institution. Well, those are the same kind of traditions that we have. Um, when we travel to Springfield for a term, uh, there are seven little apartments on the top of the, the Supreme Court building. And we have breakfast, lunch together, uh, and dinner together at a communal dining table. Uh, we sit by seniority. I'm the junior person in an assigned seat, so I always feel it's a little like the convent. But the, the good idea of this is that uh, during meals, we don't discuss cases. We talk about our families and travel and books and other things that we're interested in, again, so we can develop a relationship, so we get to know each other's people, respect each other, and I really, truly believe that that kind of respect then makes our decisions better. I understand that there are renovations now for the Supreme Court and it's going to be closed and you'll actually be hearing cases in Chicago. Here in Chicago, uh, there is a courtroom for the Supreme Court at 160 North LaSalle, uh, a place where all seven justices can uh, be together and hear cases. And what we're hoping is that while the court is sitting in Chicago, that uh, members of the bar and members of the public, law students and others will be able to come and we'll have more people having the opportunity to see how the court works. Um, sometimes our cases are real focused and technical and maybe a little boring to some if you haven't really you know, thought about what the issues are. If anyone was interested in coming to the court, all of the briefs will be online at the, on the Supreme Court uh, website. So if you want to look at the briefs, you want to see the schedule, it's all the information is there. And we do hope that this will be an opportunity to have some education for, as I say, not just the bar, but also the public as to what the Supreme Court does. I want to thank Justice Mary Jane Tice for being with us today to shed some insights on the Supreme Court process. I'm Paula Holderman. See you next time.